Okay, so let's do an example where we find the values of tangent, secant, cotangent, and cosecant at one of these quadrant angles. So again, we're really restricted right now in what we are actually able to find, but this is the beginnings and we'll keep adding to it. So this three pi over two is one that we looked at earlier. We're gonna start at one zero, and remember every quarter of the way around the circle is a pi over two. So here's pi over two, and then two pi over two, which is pi, and then three pi over two. So our point P is at the bottom of the circle, so x is zero and y is negative one, which means we can say cosine of that t, and I guess I can just write three pi over two in there. Three pi over two is equal to zero, because cosine is x value, and sine, 3 pi over 2 is equal to negative 1 because sine is our y value. Okay, so if we're looking at tangent, and again, this is just a memorization piece that you'll want to jump right into. Tangent is defined as sine over cosine. You don't need to write this out every time, but this is what we're thinking. And the value of sine was negative 1, and the value of cosine was 0. And we run into a problem right away. You cannot divide by 0. So tangent is actually undefined at 3 pi over 2. Um, and you'll find that anytime your x coordinate is 0, tangent is going to be undefined. So this is kind of a new thing that we'll have to worry about. So I'm not even going to say that's equal because it just straight up didn't work out. Okay, so let's try cotangent. Cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. It's cosine over sine. So if the value of cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0 and the value of sine 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, then the value of cotangent is actually 0 there. So cotangent is defined, but we just get 0. Okay, let's do secant 3 pi over 2. Remember that secant is 1 over cosine. And cosine is our x value. So x equals 0. So this is going to be 1 over 0, which is another undefined. Okay, so we've got two of our trig functions that are undefined at this point. Let's do one more and then we'll talk about this a little bit. Cosecant. Cosecant is 1 over sine. So the value of sine, sine is your y value. The value of sine is negative 1. If we do the reciprocal of negative 1, we actually just get negative 1 for that one. Okay, so there are the values of those four functions at 3 pi over 2. And I just want to say again that we're really restricted right now. We've only got these quadrant angles. And at those quadrant angles, so this is the 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then so on, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, all of those. Um, at the pi over 2s, the multiples of pi over 2, uh, one of your coordinates is always zero, and if one of your coordinates is zero, that's going to make a couple of these trig functions undefined. I do want to be really clear, though, that sine and cosine are always defined. If you give me a real number arc length, it will always associate with a point on the unit circle, so it will always have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So sine and cosine are defined everywhere. The others are all defined as fractions, ratios of the two, uh, ratios involving the two. So those will become undefined whenever the denominator is zero. So for now, while we're working strictly with these pi over twos, you're going to see a lot of undefines, a lot of zeros, a lot of negative ones crop up. Once we get into a few more angles that we're uh, able to say the exact values of sine and cosine for, we'll be able to do a little bit more with that. Um, okay, my notes, sine and cosine. Okay, so we just talked about that. And then um, each function will take on positive and negative values depending on what quadrant we're in. So for right now, uh, it's again not very interesting when we just look at zeros and ones, but we've seen a little bit of it. Some are negative, some are positive. So if we think, for example, about sine, sine is your y coordinate. So sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. 
and your y value sign is negative when you're in quadrant three or quadrant four. And that's not going to be the same for cosine or uh, your other functions. So for cosine, cosine is your x value. So it's going to be positive in quadrant one and quadrant four, but it's going to be negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. And then since the other four are all um, ratios involving these two trig functions, they'll all vary as well. So for example, tangent, if you think about in quadrant one, if we take a positive divided by a positive, that's still positive. In quadrant two, um, we're dividing a positive by a negative, so that's going to be negative. Negative divided by negative is back to positive, and uh, which way does that go? Negative divided by positive is back to negative, so there's like a diagonal pattern there. And I mentioned this, but this is a good time to say it again. Let me zoom in. For tangent, remember we're taking the ratio of y to x, and because this line that we draw out to our point P um, goes through the origin, there's this really nice thing that's not necessarily true for other points. If you take that Y value and you divide it by that X value, that's rise over run, that's slope. So slope of that line is equal to tangent. And you can see that that makes sense for what we said um, quadrant one, if your point is in quadrant one and you draw a line from the origin to your point, it'll have a positive slope. If your point is in quadrant three and you draw a line through the origin to your point, that's also a positive slope. Don't be confused by the direction that you're going. As we move from left to right, it's increasing, so it's positive. Um, if we were in quadrant two, Notice we'd have a negative slope, and the same thing with quadrant four. So you will see these different values, um, different signs coming up in the different quadrants for your trig functions. Okay, thanks for watching.